Uh, well, one point, I have exhibit two here, which actually had five. That was the Victorian Act that was produced um, earlier. Um, and exhibit one is the disc, which I believe has come out of the YouTube store. Um, really, where do you want to wish us to hear from the law? Where do you want to wish us to hear from me on the law? I don't know. Tax or both? Tax or Yes. But it may, given that Mr. Um, Adams is self represented, it may be helpful if they get to your point of view. Yes, Your Honor. What should you say to the rules? In relation to disorderly behaviour, um, which, is, which is probably a good understanding as to what um, Mr. Adams um, is aware of as um, he is attached um, to the blurb from. Um, what the police um, police conduct books about the sort of behaviour um, as quoted the Booker and Police Supreme Court case. Um, yes, Your Honour. Um, essentially, uh, as that reads, behaviour is seriously disruptive of public order, causing a nuisance. Uh, it must cause a disturbance um, to the particular circumstance and time and place. Uh, any affected members of the public are not reasonably expected to ensure because of its intensity and or duration of the police's cases, his actions uh, towards the gym staff, staff member, uh, following which in particular um, the older gentleman uh, in the line, um, and then again the security guard and the gym staff uh, person again um, all constitutes. Uh, disorderly behaviour. I understand um, Mr. Adams um, has seen in the video perhaps frustration and being told that he can't film. Uh, the police's task is his, his actions and continuing to film and the, the circumstances that took it beyond filming a public place and actually amounted to disorderly behaviour. Um, but in particular, the, the elderly gentleman, it's all on the video at the moment, but the police case is that amounts to disorderly behaviour. Um, in relation to trespass, um, the video outlines him being warned to leave and then refusing to do so uh, under section 3 of the Trespass Act. Um, there is a defence available that if, he, if Mr. Adams proved it was necessary for him to remain as he was concerned about his protection or protection of other person or because of some emergency. Um, involving his property or the property of other person. Um, none of which was, was um, in evidence. The video simply shows him uh, refusing to leave and wanting to call Mark um, in relation to that. So he was um, born to leave and remained um, and then was arrested for that. Um, and then the video shows him physically resisting. Um, in relation to the um, element that he knew uh, possible. Harry was an officer. Um, she's clearly in uniform. Her badge is um, on that uniform. She is with another constable. Um, and of course, um, that's where he knew that he could be uh, willfully blind that she was a constable involving ignoring the true situation. Um, and that's when those other aspects um, come into play. Accepting, however, that, that, that she did not identify herself in the video as um, Constable Schuster did. Um, but in terms of the arrest, she was acting in execution of her uh, duty after the trespassing. Um, and Exhibit 2, just to jump back to trespass, um, Exhibit 2 allows the police to follow to trespass uh, on behalf of um, the Oakland Airport, which is um, uh, a requirement under, um, I think it's interpretation under Section 2 of the Trespass Act. She was acting under the authority of any person of lawful occupation of that place, and that's what it's over to. It's over to do um,
it was and is a public place, regardless of it being private property or not. Exhibit D6, Section 2 of the Crimes Act 1961, showing the interpretation of assault, given that during Constable Aaron Schuster's testimony, he was uncertain what assault meant. Therefore, to assist in clarifying what assault means, Ms. Adams submits that assault means the act of intentionally applying or attempting to apply force to the person of another directly or indirectly, threatening or any act or gesture to apply such force to a person of another. If the person making the threat has or causes others to believe on reasonable grounds that he or she has the present ability to affect his or her purpose and to assault as a corresponding meaning. Ms. Adams submits that Senior Constable Sheree Hare testified to both threatening to use force and without reasonable grounds use force to make or affect Ms. Adams' purpose and prevent Ms. Adams in the exercising of his rights at the time of the incident as shown on the video evidence. Without any justifiable limitation, namely to stop him recording and documenting the incident and his reactions. Exhibit P7 is Section 4 of the Police and Regulations 2008, showing the information that evidence of identity and authority must bear and state, given Senior Constable Sheree Hare prevented Ms. Adams from documenting her ID and failed to identify herself upon request. This behaviour by Senior Constable Sheree Hare, due to either a delusional or misinformed expectation of privacy or prohibition on recording at Auckland Airport, appeared irrational and unreasonable and did not install Ms. Adams with any trust or confidence personally in her training, knowledge or abilities. If Auckland Airport was, as she believed, a private place or private property, how can Ms. Adams even be charged with this sort of behaviour as an element of this offence? It was that the offence allegedly occurred in public or within a public place. Exhibit P8 is Section 48 of the Crimes Act 1961, which Ms. Adams submits as a response to the allegation of resisting police, as Ms. Adams was unjustifiably assaulted several times by Senior Constable Sheree Hare. He believed he was justified in using, in the defence of himself, such force as, in the circumstances he believed was reasonable to use. Exhibit P9 is page 14 of 49 from 10-1 New Zealand Police Internet, released under the Official Information Act 1982, New Zealand Police Instructions on Behaviour Offences, specifically defining disorderly behaviour as being behaviour that is seriously disruptive of public order. It must cause a disturbance to public good order, which in particular circumstances of time and place, any affected members of the public could not reasonably be expected to endure because of its intensity and or its duration. And cites Crawford v. Police, 2007, NCSC 307. Ms. Adams submits that his behaviour at the time did not constitute disorderly behaviour. Ms. Adams did not raise his voice or act disorderly in any way. Any escalation of the events on that day were created by the behaviour and actions of Senior Constable Sheree Hare at that time, as her sole issue during the entire interaction appeared to be that Ms. Adams was recording, which was perfectly lawful activity. Ms. Adams submits that Senior Constable Hare had not escalated the matter by making threats and then using force against him in an attempt to make him comply with a request that he was not lawfully obligated to follow. The incident would not have escalated further. Ms. Adams' sole intention was to arrange an 
they were all applied to Queenstown and leave. If he had not been told by the Jetstar manager to arrange a flight crew, he would not have. Um, he would not have. If he had not been assaulted by police for exercising his right to record in public, he would not have had to use self-defence against such. The second repeats the events of 16 July 2022 that happened and acknowledges that he could have handled the situation better in hindsight and maintains his innocence against the allegation uh, alleged sorry, uh, offences before the court. Thank you. Just briefly, I should have mentioned before, I'm just one of the men's right out of the story of the family here on. Um, and um, Adam's on the criminal law, um, which the legal textbook, not Adam's. Um, um, yes. um, Adam's on criminal law. Called Adam's on criminal law, which all lawyers use. But I think what, what Mr. Bell was saying is got that. The commentary there, Martin, um, the 4-1-A, which is the section which Mr. Adams is charged under um, disorderly behaviour, doesn't um, has it, have any specific intent um, listed as opposed to the other sections of 4 do. Um, the authors say um, the conduct in question might have to be deliberate and not accidental and voluntary. Um, but the, the cases have left it open as to whether mental error is required. Um, it does go on to comment on um, awareness of annoyance and likelihood of annoyance. Um, and I, I submit that those two are made out from the videos, the continuing uh, videos of Mr. Adams' comments throughout the make famous comments and putting it on YouTube and various things. Is, there must be an appreciation there of their annoyance with the time to stop filming. Especially the elderly gentleman. There's a awareness that this kind of might cause concern has been held um, sufficient in, in case law in relation to that, but there isn't a specific means for a element um, that for that. Um, and